pretty simple idea that I'm just going to tell you over and over until I get you to believe it. And that's all of us are makers. I really believe that. All of us are makers. We're born makers. We have this ability uh, to make things, to grasp things with our hands. We use the words like grasp metaphorically to also think about understanding things. We don't just live, but we make. We create things. Well, I'm going to show you a group of makers from Maker Faire and various places. It doesn't come out particularly well, but that's a particularly tall bicycle, right? It's a scraper bike, it's called, from Oakland. And this is a particularly small scooter for the gentleman of this size. But he's trying to power it or motorize it with a drill, right? And the question he had is, can I do it? Can it be done? Apparently it can. So makers are enthusiasts, they are amateurs, they're people who love doing what they do. They don't always even know why they're doing it. We have begun organizing makers at our Maker Fair. There was one held in Detroit here last summer and it'll be held again next summer at the Henry Ford. But we hold them in San Francisco, yeah, and in New York. And it's a fabulous event to just meet and talk to these people who make things and are there to just show them to you and talk about them and have a great conversation. How do I get one of those? <laughs> these are electric muffins. Did you guys get those? So, I know Ford has new electric vehicles coming out. We got there first. This is something I call swinging in the rain. And if you can barely see it, but it's a controller at top cycles the water to fall just before and after you've passed through the bottom of the arc. So imagine a kid, am I gonna get wet? Am I gonna get wet? No, I didn't get wet. Am I gonna get wet? Am I gonna get wet? That's the experience of, of a kind of a clever ride. And of course, we have fashion. People are remaking things into fashion. I don't know if this is called a basket bra, but it ought to be something like that. We have art students getting together, taking old radiator parts and doing an iron pour to make something new out of it. They did that in the summer and it was very warm. Now this one takes a little bit to explain. You know what those are, right? Billy Bob or something kind of Billy Bass or something like that. All right. Now the background is the guy who did this is a physicist, right? And here he'll explain a little bit about what it does. I'm Richard Carter, and this is the Sashimi Tabernacle Choir. This is all computer controlled in an old Volvo. So, Richard came up from Houston last year to, to visit us in, in, in Detroit here and show the, the wonderful Sashimi Tabernacle Choir. So, are you a maker? How many people here would say you're a maker? If you raise your hand, that's a pretty good, but there's some of you out there that won't admit that you're makers. And, and again, think about it. You're makers of food, you're makers of shelter, you're makers of lots of different things. And partly what interests me today is, is, is your makers of your own world, and particularly the role that technology has in your, in your life. Um, you know, you're really a driver or a passenger, to use a Volkswagen phrase. You know, makers are in control. That's what fascinates them. That's why they do what they do. They want to figure out how things work. They want to get access to it, and they want to control it. They want to use it to their own purpose. You know, makers today, uh, to some degree, are out on the edge. They're, they're not mainstream, they're, they're a little bit radical, they're a bit subversive in what they do. But at one time, it was fairly commonplace to think of yourself as a maker. It was not something you'd even remark upon. And I found this old, uh, old uh, video, and I'll tell you more about it, but just...
Of all things Americans are, we are makers. With our strengths and our minds and spirit, we gather, we form, and we fashion. Makers and shapers and put it togetherers. So it goes on to show you people making things out of wood, a, a grandfather making a, a ship in a bottle, a, a woman making a pie, some somewhat standard fare of the day. But it, you know, it, was, it was a sense of pride that we made things, that, that the world around us was made by us. It didn't just exist. We made it, and we were connected to it that way. And I think that's tremendously important. Now, I'm going to tell you one funny thing about this. This particular reel was, it's an industrial video, but it was shown in drive-in theaters in uh, 1961, in the Detroit area, in fact, and um, it preceded Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. <laughs> so I like to think there was something going on there of the new generation of makers coming out of this plus Psycho. This is Andrew Archer. I met Andrew at one of our community meetings in putting together Maker Fair. Andrew had moved to Detroit from Duluth, Minnesota. And as a, I, I talked to his mom, and I ended up doing a story on him for our magazine called Kid Robot. And he's just a kid that grew up uh, uh, playing with tools instead of toys. He liked to take things apart. His mother gave him a part of the garage, and he collected things from yard sales, and he made stuff. And then he didn't particularly like school that much, but he got involved in robotics competitions, and it, he realized he had a talent, and more, more importantly, he had a real passion for it. And he began building robots, and start, when I sat down next to him, he was telling me at a company he formed, and he was building some robots for automobile factories to move things around on the, on the factory floor, and that's why he moved to Michigan. But he also moved here to meet other people doing what he's doing. And this kind of gets to this important idea today. Uh, this is Jeff and Bilal and several others here in a hacker space. And there's about three hacker spaces or more in Detroit, and it's probably even some new ones since I've been here last. But these are like clubs. Uh, they're, they're, they're sharing tools, sharing space, sharing expertise in, in what to make. And so uh, it's a very interesting phenomenon that's going uh, across the world. But essentially, these are people that are playing with technology. Let me say that again, playing. They don't necessarily know what they're doing or why they're doing it. They're playing to discover what the technology can do and probably to discover what they can do themselves, what their own capabilities are. Now, the other thing that I think is, is taking off, or another reason making is taking off today is there's some great new tools out there. And you can't see this very well on the screen, but Arduino. Arduino is an open source hardware platform. It's a microcontroller. If you don't know what those are, they're just the brains. So they're the brains of maker projects. And here's an example of one. And I don't know if you can see it that well, but that's a mailbox. So an ordinary mailbox and an Arduino. So you figure out how to program this, and you put this uh, in your mailbox. And when someone opens your mailbox, you get a notification, an alert message goes to your iPhone. Now, that could be a dog door. It could be, you know someone get going somewhere where they shouldn't, like a little brother into a little sister's room. There's all kinds of different uh, things that you could imagine for that. Now here's something, a 3D printer. That's another tool that's really taken off. Really, really interesting. This is MakerBot. And there are industrial versions of this, about $20,000. Th these guys came up with a, a kit version for $750. And that means that hobbyists and, and ordinary folks can get a hold of this and begin playing with 3D printers. Now, they don't know what they want to do with it, but they're going to figure it out. They'll only figure it out by getting their hands on it and playing with it. One of the coolest things is MakerBot sent out an upgrade, some new brackets for the, the box. Well, you printed out the brackets and then replaced the old brackets with the new ones. Isn't that cool? So makers harvest technology from all the places around us. This is a radar speed detector that is uh, developed from a Hot Wheels toy. And uh, they do interesting things. They're really creating new areas and exploring areas that you might only think, um, you know, the military is doing drones. Well, there's a whole community of people building autonomous airplanes or vehicles, something that you could program to fly on its own without the stick or anything to figure out what path it's going fascinating work they're doing. We just had a, a, an issue on space exploration, DIY space exploration. 
this is probably the best time in the history of mankind to love space. You could build your own satellite and get it into space for like $8,000. Think how much money and how many years it took NASA to get satellites into space. In fact, these guys actually work for NASA and they're using, they're trying to pioneer using off-the-shelf components, cheap things that aren't specialized that they can combine and, and send up into space. Makers are a source of innovation. I think it relates back to something like the birth of the personal computer industry. This is Steve Wozniak. Where does he learn about computers? It's the homebrew computer club, just like a hacker space. And he says, you know, I could go there all day long and talk to people and share ideas for free. Well, he did a little bit better than free. But it's important to understand that a lot of the origins of our uh, industries even like Henry Ford, come from this idea of playing and figuring things out in groups. Well, if I haven't convinced you that you're a maker, I hope I could convince you that our next generation should be makers, that kids are particularly interested in this, in this ability to control the physical world and be able to use things like microcontrollers and build robots. And we got to get this into schools or into communities in, in many, many ways. The ability to... to uh, tinker to shape and reshape the world around us. There's a great opportunity today, and that's what I really care about the most. So the answer to the question of what will America make, it's more makers. Thank you very much.